Good evening, viewers. You are welcome to UBC First Aid. This evening, we're going to be talking about electricity, electric shock, and electric burns. Well, in our community, we have individuals that tend to have accidents or trauma caused by electricity. But let's find out what situation does it occur? Some people have poor wiring of the electricity in their houses. Others have broken cables for extension cables, flat iron cables, TV cables. Others have their sockets that have been totally damaged and vandalized. And what happens is when you plug in your cable into these sockets, you get an electric shock. Another accident occurred recently of a mother who was hanging clothes on a wire, not knowing that the neighbor had bypassed a wire onto her roof and she got an electric shock. In such situations, what do we do? When someone has received an electric shock, there are factors that are going to occur in this person's body. The patient will present with shock. When somebody is, being, is receiving an electric shock, it's advisable that, first of all, identify the main switch and switch off the power supply. Two, get a dry piece of wood and push this person off the wires, off the hand that is holding onto this shock area. Well, in our community, you find that with these small shocks, someone may just get hit and then lose the hand immediately, and then they get a burn. Now, when they have a burn, that burn has to be taken carefully. It may present with blisters, swelling, pain, and uh, loss of function for that particular area of the body. That area has to receive proper care. You splint the limb and also try to remove any dirt that is on that wound using plenty of water and then cover it appropriately as we prepare to go to hospital. But there are scenarios where a patient will collapse and faint in your presence. When this occurs, please call for help because you need to transfer this patient to the hospital. The second thing you need to do is place this patient in a left lateral position, which we call the recovery position. In this position, ensure that the head of the body of the person has been tilted a bit up to allow air flow. Check for the pulse of this patient. Check and see if the patient is breathing. You're going to ask me how. Look at the abdomen of this patient. Is it moving up and down? Is the chest moving up and down? This will show you that the person is breathing effectively. Check for any added sounds. If there are any added sounds, there may be an obstruction somewhere on the airway. As you do that, lift the head up and ensure that this patient is able to take in as much air as possible. Three, ensure that wherever the patient is, is safe from these electric wires or other accidents that can occur to this patient. And this goes out to our viewers out there. If an individual got into contact with electricity, ensure, number one, that the electric supply has been switched off. Do not make an attempt to get close to this person without removing the main electric supply. Two, do not touch this patient if you're not wearing rubber shoes. Three, do not attempt to put your hands or your body close to this person. Use a dry stick to push this patient or this person away from the wire or from the source of contact. Number four, ensure that you have called for help to transfer this patient to the hospital or the nearest health center as quick as possible because this patient will need rehydration, this patient will need close monitoring, and this patient will need further medical intervention before they can be discharged back to you at home.